Our first ever comparison video is here and we're taking a look at two of the hottest mid-range phones today, the Poco F3 and the Poco X3 GT. I'm aware that there are existing comparison videos out there already, but there are a few notes that were left out in those videos. So today I'm going to talk about those things and adding a few personal thoughts that hopefully help you in deciding which of the two phones is your best bet. To all the subscribers, welcome back and thanks for stopping by once again and if you're new here, we make tech videos of all kinds, so feel free to drop a sub to get notified of new content. Starting with the design and build. One is clearly better in terms of that feel in hand and just the overall construction of the phone. And that is the Poco F3. Now, both phones are using plastic framing and their power buttons come with embedded fingerprint scanners. The similarities continue to the omittance of the micro SD slot and the headphone jack, but both devices do come with a dongle in the box for wired headphones. The differences start with the use of Gorilla Glass 5 for both the front and back panels of the F3, which is the main reason why the phone feels more expensive and well built. So if you have the two devices in your hand, the F3 really justifies its higher price tag. Also, the matte finish on the F3 feels a lot better and smoother than the matte finish on the X3 GT, solely because there are no ridges in the back. The story is a bit different though for both black models of the device and since they're using glossy glass backing. Both again are sporting IP53 rating making them somewhat protected against dust and water splashes. Stereo speakers also power these two but the X3 GT is backed by JBL tuning. As a result, it provides a more powerful loudspeaker and with more bass than the F3. The reason why the X3 GT doesn't look and feel as good as the F3 though is because of the plastic backing. If you're observant enough, you might even think that the design of the X3 GT is kinda cheap for the price. However, Poco put their attention to the front of the device as the X3 GT is using Gorilla Glass Victus. It's a step above the Glass 5 that features better scratch resistance and shatter resistance, but if you want to be extra careful, you can always use a screen protector. So that's about it for the design, let's switch to the display. Both are sporting at least a 6.6 .6 inches diagonal display, but the F3 makes its case with the 120Hz AMOLED with a peak brightness of around 1300 nits. When you compare that to the 120Hz IPS LCD of the X3 GT, that outputs around 450 nits, the F3 clearly appears better. And that's mostly true since the AMOLED panel has better contrast, better colors, and better peak brightness. However, that 1300 nits only applies to HDR video content. So if you're just watching regular videos on YouTube or using the same social media apps, the best you can get is around 700 nits. Nevertheless, it's still brighter than the X3 GT. Now, the X3 GT may be dimmer in this comparison, but if you take away the F3 from the equation, the phone is readable at best outdoors. Although the display sizes of the two are similar, the F3 is more immersive when it comes to watching content because of the wider panel. The X3 GT, on the other hand, is ever so slightly smaller, but that small difference makes the display narrower in this comparison, thus making it more comfortable to use, especially for those with smaller hands. Since the F3 is using a more expensive display, there are features in the settings that are present on the F3 but absent on the X3 GT. For starters, the F3 provides more color schemes such as P3, sRGB, and enhanced. These schemes allow users to dial down into the color calibration of the panel, depending on one's preference. On top of that, there are also adaptive colors that adjust the colors based on the lighting around you for a more accurate representation. As for the X3 GT, the only thing you can adjust is the white balance. Additionally, the F3 features an AI image engine that enables AI HDR for SDR content to make them appear brighter. There is also MEMC that adds frames to videos for a smoother effect, but the feature works like… never. Lastly, the F3 brings always on display which is only available to AMOLED devices. Oh, and super wallpapers, you only get that on the F3. There's no denying the fact that the F3 is the phone with a better display, but if you're a gamer and you play games every day for hours, you might want to reconsider your options despite the F3 sporting 360Hz touch rate, which by the way, the advantage is hardly noticeable versus the 240Hz of the X3 GT. Like most AMOLED devices, the F3 is prone to burn in. Burn-in is basically leaving a permanent mark on the display if an image or text is displayed for extended periods. With games, the on-screen interface stays in the same place for hours. 
The only way to repair burn-in is by replacing the panel, and that itself could cost you half the price of the F3. It's still up to you if that's a risk you're willing to take, but consider yourself notified. Now we're down to the performance. On paper and real-world applications, the F3 Snapdragon 870 is faster than the X3 GT's Dimensity 1100. The gap between them isn't generation-wide, but it's significant enough to make a user decide one over the other. Both are powerful enough to handle general smartphone tasks and nearly all available mainstream and new games today, with the F3 only having more headroom for smoother gaming and future-proofing. But on paper, specs almost don't matter when real-world use comes to play. Don't get me wrong, the F3 is fast and fluid, but the software version of the X3 GT is just more optimized here. It's something probably you will only notice if you have both devices in your hands, but the X3 GT responds faster to the gestures and actions of my hands than the F3 and almost doesn't stutter when scrolling, and we have the better software to thank for. I feel like the Snapdragon A70 is being held back by the software, but only within the context of MIUI. As for full load tasks, the F3 does offer more frame rates, but the liquid cooling 1.0 Plus isn't enough to handle the thermal load of the Snapdragon 870 during extended periods, and the slim design isn't doing any help. Unlike the X3 GT, which is using liquid cooling 2.0, it can handle the thermal load of the Dimensity 1100, not to mention the addition of the slightly thicker build. So what does it mean when playing games? The F3 may provide more frame rates, but that is at the expense of jitter and stutters in-game. While the X3 GT may be churning out lower numbers, the gameplay is still consistent since the thermal load of the chipset is more manageable. As for longevity, both can last at least an entire day of regular use. But since I've tested both thoroughly, the X3 GT lasts a bit longer than the F3, solely because it has that 5000 mAh battery as opposed to the 4520 of the F3. Additionally, it also charges nearly twice as fast thanks to that 67W charger. It requires at least 45 minutes for the X3 GT to reach 100%, while the F3 requires at least 60 minutes. If you're worried about that heat during charging, well, neither of the two felt hotter than the other. And finally, the cameras. Both phones are using three sensors in the back, main, ultrawide, and macro. On paper, the X3 GT looks better, but with selfies, the F3 is using a larger sensor than the X3 GT. Before we get into the samples, there are features that you need to know that are only available on the F3. First, the audio zoom toggle, which enhances the sounds of the subject during videos. Second, movie effects, which lets you create interesting short clips like nighttime time lapse, time freeze, and magic zoom. Third, is clone, which lets you create clones of yourself in a video or photo without the hassle of editing. Fourth, the frontal sound toggle when recording selfies, which basically blocks the noise behind the phone. And fifth, the ability to record HDR and 1080p60 with a back camera. All five of those are either missing or not available on the X3 GT. But for the quality of the cameras, my preference lies with the X3 GT due to its less processed look. It's less contrasty and dark than the F3 which leaves more room for me to edit. However, I do prefer the selfie videos on the F3, but when it comes to capturing videos indoors, I actually prefer the X3 GT because the F3 has this tendency to produce a ton of grain due to its aggressive noise reduction. Now for the prices and models, during special sales, these prices go even lower. But for now, here's how the regular prices look. I think the F3's base model is an enticing option here given the overall package it offers. But if you're a gamer, you definitely want more storage for your games, especially emulators, and 128GB is starting to look small in that regard. And that's where the 256GB model of the X3 GT makes things more interesting considering all the factors that we have just discussed. 
So that's it for the comparison between the F3 and X3 GT, but hopefully I was able to help you in deciding which of the two to get. So that's it for this one, drop a sub or a like if you feel supporting the channel, and until the next one, stay safe.